Greetings, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about a workflow in GIS that has been around for 20 years or more that now is really changing. It really is. And that is, you've got a project, you've got a problem to solve, you download the data, you work with it, you analyze it, and then you would plot it, put it in a publication, and increasingly over the last few years, you could embed it in various forms of multimedia, even web mapping applications like story maps, embedded into an ArcGIS online map, for example, and you were done. But the idea of where you would do your analysis was really on your local device with data that's local. That has been changing as I've documented in other videos, but it's changing in a further way too in terms of raster analysis. So here, I'm going to guide you through not just the, the details, but think about the bigger picture. Here I've got a project inside ArcGIS Pro that represents what we did for many years and still will continue to do so uh, for years to come. But, uh, here I've got some land cover data that I actually downloaded from the state of Nebraska in a particular study area of mine and which areas in terms of the land cover data have a land value of grassland. So that's this this greenish color right here, okay? But that's local data. In a similar way, I also downloaded a piece of the digital elevation model. There it is. Got that from the US Geological Survey. It's a 30 meter D DEM. I converted it to meters in terms of its vertical elevation. And then I ran some analyses on it with the raster calculator. And then these are the elevations that are suitable in this case for fire towers and then I would do further analysis for example with slope and then I would figure out which slopes are less than five degrees and those are those light green areas and as I proceeded and actually taught courses in okay now I want to figure out which areas are okay elevation wise and which are okay slope wise then I want to figure out which are okay slope wise and land use wise and so I pr proceed through these these steps where eventually you'd get down to the slope is okay the land classification the land use is okay and so on I'd convert it to vector and then be done with the analysis and the final sites would be this area here and then I would zoom to them but that's all with local data okay what about this what if that data was online, you could actually stream it. What would be the advantages? Well, number one, you don't have to store everything locally. So you have the storage issue that's that's solved. And number two, you don't have to get pieces. You can actually have it as a streaming service. So depending on your study area, you don't have to download these chunks of data and then piece them together. Third, you've got largely the projection issue solved because elevation services online will reproject and meet your needs that way. There's other advantages. Uh, you've got an updated service up in the cloud. There are challenges to be sure. You know, do you have the bandwidth to do this? Do you have an online account? There's other things uh, to think about. But bear with me for just a few more minutes because I'm going to show you what it's like to do this now with data coming in from the Living Atlas of the World in ArcGIS Online. Now folks, this is in ArcGIS Pro, just like we were using before, but now in Catalog, I've gone to Portal and the Living Atlas. And in the Living Atlas, I've typed in Elevation. Look what I've got here. I've got two different kinds of things that's germane to our discussion here, maps and services. Maps are fine if you wanna just look at, like for example, I've got a hill shade here, multi-dimensional hill shade, beautiful rendering here in Western Colorado is where I'm looking right now. I've got that multi-dimensional hill shade. So I've got terrain, but those are for visualization. What I wanna do is analysis. And so if I scroll down here, I've got a couple of other things. I've got a slope map, which is as the name implies, again, just for visualization. But I also have a slope in degrees right here. I also have elevation services as a layer that I can do analysis on. So I've added those to my map, and in my geoprocessing, I'm in the raster calculator now numerous times with this particular workflow that I described earlier. I can, with the data that's there, let me show you the history. So out here under catalog, I've got history on the right side here, and one of the things I've done, as you can see here, I've got terrain, slope, and degrees, 
and then I've said, oh, okay, if it's above 50, I want to return that as a raster data set now saved locally, okay? But I'm using the service from ArcGIS Online, the Living Atlas in the, of the World. Let's take a look at that. Terrain, slope and degrees, there it is. And what I've done is I've run the raster calculator on it, and now I want slope is greater than 50, 50 degrees. So I've symbolized it with a value of true or greater than 50 with this yellow color. So you can see this is uh, right on the cliff edge and a little bit lower down on the cliff. Another one that I ran is I've got an aspect map. So if the aspect is greater than 135 and the aspect is less than 225, in other words, due south, right, because 180 is due south, so this is a little bit on both sides of due south, so a little bit southeast and southwest, but also due south. And then I've saved that, again, locally into a layer, aspect south. So let's take a look at the original aspect map and then my new one is coming from the Living Atlas of the World and let's turn off some other things. There's the aspect map. Not all that pretty, but I didn't change the symbology from ArcGIS Online, Living Atlas of the World. Then my query on, okay, give me the south-facing slopes, that's right here. Okay, so those are the south-facing slopes in, in the lighter color. Maybe I should turn, change the symbology so that the zeros have no color. Let's do that. All right, great. So aspect south, and just have the default topo map behind it. Now, that's easy to see. Now the greenish areas are south facing. Another tool that I ran is, how do we find that? We go to catalog. So let's go view, and then look at the catalog pane. Okay, and there's our history again. Another tool that I ran is terrain is greater than 1666 meters. So here is terrain. Again, that's a service from ArcGIS Online. So there's the original terrain, and here is my result, greater than 1666 meters. So the ones are higher than 1666, and that pale color is lower. Let's, let's look at one more. I think you get the idea. I'm using services from ArcGIS Online from the living atlas of the world. Now, we're just talking about elevation here, folks, but the shape of things to come, right, is that you're going to be able to have all kinds of data served online that you can do analysis on, not just visualize things, but actually do analysis on, thus negating your need to actually download every single piece of information that you need to your local device and process it there. Fascinating. And also a huge paradigm shift. One more. I've got some land cover data. This is a, a sort of a harbinger of the future because it's not just elevation data. Here is USA NLCD land cover 2011. Same kind of land cover data that you and I have known and loved for years. So let's take a look at that. Let me turn off the layer below it. Okay, so there's my land cover data. If I click in here, I'm going to get values. Okay, shrub and scrub. Shrub and scrub. Difficult to say, but that's the pale color in there. The forest, I've got symbolized dark. Okay, so that's the land cover data. I, I use the raster calculator to determine, okay, where is shrub and scrub? And that is this pixel value of one, meaning it's true. It's shrub and scrub. I can also verify that, right, by going to appearance at the top, and then I use this transparency. You can see that that's truly the shrub and scrub. On the geoprocessing, let's go back to view analysis. Under the raster calculator, when I ran these, I went to environments and I said the extent is going to be the current display extent. Okay? Current display extent. In other words, what's on here? Right? If I've got elevation services for the whole world, for example, and national land cover data for, let's say, the whole of the U.S., I don't want to be doing analysis on the whole world or the whole United States. I want to be able to, to use, in this case, just the extent or a study area. Let's say you've got a watershed or a police district or a, a municipal boundary or something like that. You can set it to just that extent.
okay? So that's very important when you're doing analysis when you've got the data streaming in from, from the Living Atlas of the World. Living Atlas of the World, go see some other videos on it. There are no shortages of not just data sets there, but data sets that you can actually do analysis on. That's pretty exciting and again, a big paradigm shift. So think about for your next project, actually using some of these services from ArcGIS Online, Living Atlas of the World, inside ArcGIS Pro. Thanks.